Well, howdy. I'm the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com, and I hope you are having a great day. We're going to consider at least roughly some types of arguments. And this is just going to be a rough outline. First off, what is an argument? Well, an argument, for example, is not an assertion. It's not just a mere opinion. An argument is where we're trying to justify things, where we're trying to prove certain things. We're trying to say that this is probably the case for X, Y, and Z reasons. So if you say, I hate Donald Trump, or I love Donald Trump, that's just an assertion, that's just an opinion. But an argument will be giving some reasons to justify that conclusion of loving or hating that particular person. So an argument is not just some bickering back and forth between two people. In any case, we can divide arguments into deductive arguments and then just take the contradictory of that and just say, well, we have non-deductive arguments. Now, a deductive argument preserves truth. In a deductive argument, the premises support the conclusion conclusively. If we have a valid argument, that is to say, we follow the laws of logic, insofar as we have true premises, we're guaranteed to get a true conclusion. So in this sense, it preserves truth. A non-deductive argument is probable. It doesn't bring us a conclusion conclusively. To be sure, the probability might be very, very high. It might be 99.999999% so to speak. But nevertheless, it is not deductive. In fact, in a deductive argument, we can go so far as to say that if we deny a conclusion that validly follows from a set of premises, then we will run into a contradiction. So if we have, for example, all true premises, we validly derive some conclusion, but then we deny that conclusion, there's a sense in which we've run into a contradiction because that denial of that conclusion will contradict the premises. That's how strong deduction is. But in non-deductive arguments, you will not run into a contradiction just by denying the conclusion. It may be improbable, but it will not be something that runs into a literal, bold contradiction. So what are the different types of deductive arguments? They're all sorts of types. So we're just considering this in a rough outline. So one type of deductive argument just comes from math. In math, there are all sorts of different types of proofs. You can prove the Pythagorean theorem. You can prove various things about numbers through number theory. Now, there's something called mathematical induction, but with the types of definitions we're considering right now, in fact, a mathematical induction would fall under a deductive argument. Now, it should be noted that statistics, even though it uses mathematics, is not deductive. It's an inductive form of reasoning. There's also various types of syllogisms. For example, we have categorical syllogisms. Consider the argument all men are mortals, all Greeks are men, therefore all Greeks are mortals. It is deductive. The conclusion is guaranteed to be true. And it is true because we have true premises and we validly argue to that conclusion. We follow the laws of logic. There's also, for example, hypothetical syllogisms. Consider something like, if it's raining, the ground is getting wet. It is raining, therefore the ground is getting wet. You also have, for example, disjunctive syllogisms. Consider something like, it is either sunny or cloudy outside right now. It's not cloudy, therefore it is sunny. So that would be a disjunctive syllogism, another form of deduction. We can also consider, in a way, arguments by definition a type of deduction, although to be sure, it might be better to classify an argument by definition as a type of syllogism, a categorical syllogism, but there's also reasons not to think of an argument merely by definition as a good type of categorical syllogism, but, but that's a separate kind of debate that you will find in the literature. But if we think about a definition, and if a definition includes a certain quality as a necessary condition, then anything that fits in that definition must likewise have that quality. So, for example, consider someone saying, Bob is my brother, therefore Bob must be a male. Well, that 
follows by definition because the term brother includes male in the definition. We also have, for example, one of my favorite types of deductive arguments, the reductio ad absurdum. And on my website, amateurlogician.com, I have an entry on the reductio ad absurdum, the formal and an informal version of the reductio ad absurdum. In the formal sense, a reductio ad absurdum takes some premises and then derives a contradiction based on some assumption. But because that assumption leads to a contradiction and contradictions cannot be true, that assumption must be false. It's a very cool, very powerful type of reasoning. And in fact, in mathematics, the reductio ad absurdum is often used by mathematicians. In the informal version of the reductio ad absurdum, we take some premises, we validly derive some conclusion that is absurd, not in resulting in a logical contradiction, but is deriving validly an absurd result that no one should accept. But because this conclusion is just false, it must mean that the premises that led to that conclusion must be false. There must be something wrong in one of the premises, at least. So that's one of the coolest types of deductive arguments. So that's deduction. And that's just a rough outline. But what about non-deductive arguments? Non-deductive arguments are much more murkier. You don't have this definitive, guaranteed result in non-deductive arguments. Some arguments are stronger than other arguments when it comes to non-deduction. And there are different ways to classify it. So first off, we can think of induction. Now, sometimes non-deductive arguments are all called inductive arguments. I think that's using a too broad definition of the term induction, in my opinion. But in an induction argument, we're generalizing from particular cases. So if I see that, hey, this person is mortal, this person is mortal, this human is mortal, this human is mortal, so therefore all humans are mortal, we've engaged in an deductive argument. We've generalized from particular cases to reach a sweeping, general, universal conclusion. There's also something called abduction. And in an abduction argument, we're just making an inference to the best explanation. We're given a particular case and then we're saying, most likely, the explanation is such and such. We don't have a generalization here. We're just dealing with one case, and we're inferring what the best explanation is. There's also, for example, analogical reasoning. Or reasoning by analogy. So if we notice two things have many of the same characteristics, we might then assume that, well, given that item A has X, Y, Z characteristics, well, the other item will also probably have X, Y, Z characteristics as well. It's just a probable argument. Another very, very important type of non-deductive argument concerns authority. And in fact, most of our knowledge comes from authority. How do you know where you were born? How do you know when you were born? How do you know various facts about history or geography? How does a scientist possibly know about all the various scientific theories out there. Has he verified every single theory out there himself in the laboratory, so to speak? I don't think so. So authority is a very powerful and important type of non-deductive argument. There's also, for example, causal inference. For example, we notice an effect, and then we presume there must be some cause of that effect. That would be a non-deductive form of argument. So this is just a rough outline of possible types of arguments. There are other ways to classify these things. There are other ways to subdivide these things. But this is a good outline. Now, if you enjoy this material, if you learn from this material, if you want to see more of this material, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. I would appreciate it. Anyhow, I hope you have a good day, and thank you so much for watching.